Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am chatting with Allison all about visibility and confidently pitching ourselves. So Allison, welcome into the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk today. I am so excited to dive into this topic. So before we do, can you tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Allison Carter. I am the founder of Allison Carter celebrates. I'm a Seattle mom of two, and I help creative entrepreneurs show up as themselves on the internet and make a ton of money. <laughs> so I do that with helping with visibility strategies, pitching ourselves to not only media outlets, podcasts, different things like that, but also pitching ourselves to our audience regularly with the content that we create and how to really build relationships and connections and build a community with our audience, get our content in front of the right eyeballs so we can really be building the businesses that we want to build, serving the dreamy, dreamy clients that we want to serve and also enjoying our life, having space and time to hang with our littles and not always kind of have our business baby on the back of our minds and really just be present with our families, have fun with our life and really chase the freedom that we want with the businesses that we build. That is so good because I think that's something that's on every mompreneur's mm -hmm. list of goals and desires is just being more present, having that freedom and flexibility to enjoy life, to be oh. able to spend time with our kids. Because you think about it, the amount of time that they're little is it goes by really, really fast. And it's kind yeah. of scary, actually, how fast it, the time has been flying by. I mean, when we're recording this, it's, it's, we're already through the first quarter almost. And it's mm -hmm. crazy to me to wrap my mind around yeah. this. So I know. yes, I, know. I absolutely love that. And the other thing you touched upon too, it's about building relationships. And I think yeah. once you make that, that mindset shift mm -hmm. that it's not about selling, it's about building those relationships. That's where it gets easier in a way. Yep. Have you found yep. that? Oh my gosh. Yes. A 100%. Like I, the, oh, the secret, I will give it to you. The secret to my success <laughs> is showing up as myself on the internet from yeah. day one. So I've been in business for six years now. My littles were three and six months old when I started my business. They're now nine and six and they don't know any different one. So they just know that, you know, mommy talks to her phone or mom, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I've had many different hats and avenues as I have created this business. I was in the party space. I've had a subscription box of crafts and activities I coach other businesses. I go retreats. I host a large scale event for product based businesses. Like I run, I run the gamut when it comes to my hand in a lot of pots. But when it comes to the relationships, has been the key to everything because I have relationships with major editors at major publication houses. I have my business. It's myself has been featured in Oprah, Martha Stewart, Real Simple, BuzzFeed. I mean, name a publication. Allison Carter Celebrates has most likely been featured in it in some capacity. And I figured out how to do that just by scrapping some things together and genuinely connecting, showing myself, being confident in my voice and my unique perspective and the way that I get to show up relevant and relatable to their audience as number one. I could sit here all day and sell myself. I'm not shy asking for the sale. I could totally come on this and flip it to my full advantage and, and promote every single thing that I have going on right now. But I would literally never do that because my relationship with Amy would forever be broken because I just broke her trust in inviting me on this show to build trust with her audience and serve those of you listening and serve you so well that you can't not but pull over in your car or stop for a second and think about who you're going to pitch next or think about writing your pitch and really help you 
build the business that you want and get your content out in front of the right people and help you do that. You are going to relate way more to me after I do that for you than you ever would if I was just sitting here selling you on all the awesome things that I have going on. And then Amy and I also get to continue our relationship moving forward because she values the fact that I showed up and I served her people because that continues the trust that they have in her knowing that she puts quality people in front of you on this podcast. Like this is how this all works. Exactly. Exactly. It's not as complicated as we're making it out to be. You don't need another course. You don't need oh God, no, to learn no, no, no. <laughs> a new funnel strategy. You don't need to have 20,000 emails. You don't need mm -hmm. to be omnipresent on the internet. Yeah. You need our relationships and mm -hmm. really just coming to others with that attitude of service. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. And that right there, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. And it's yeah. absolutely well, amazing. And it's actually what pitching is like at the core of it, you are serving another person's audience. So when I say, let's get featured, let's get you featured in media, my definition, which is not the fancy PR people's definition, but I ain't some fancy PR agent. I'm just a mom that scrapped this together and has gotten a ton of logos on my site. You can go look at them for yourself, but it is the, like the 101 of serving another person's audience with your content. And so I am showing up to help them make a change, have a transformation, tweak something in their strategy, make them feel like an awesome mom, whatever that is, is you are pitching to help their audience. Most people fall into the trap of pitching themselves to sound fancier and more credible than they actually are because they feel like they have to prove themselves worthy of being featured in that outlet when really you have to show up with a heart of service in I have something that could really benefit your audience that they're struggling with right now and I would love to share it. Yes. Big yes. difference. Big difference there. Exactly. Because... You are the proof that it can be done, that this yeah. works, that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on this. Mm -hmm. And how many of us have been pitched, they're cold pitched <laughs> in the DMs, those like, hey, da 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 da, and it just feels icky. And mm -hmm. immediately it's like, no, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not even going to reply. We're just no. going to delete this message and pretend like it never happened. And that happens a lot still. A lot. So, and we do not pay for PR in these parts either. My exactly. part, my land, we're not PR paying people over here because it is a free marketing strategy that you implement for yourself. And it is a very successful strategy if you are consistent with it. And if you just have the confidence to not care about getting a no. So like a no is totally fine. A no actually is way better than a ghost because at least you got a response from someone. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely you will get a ghost and that's okay. Like, because there, that's a dime a dozen, but it, every single pitch that you put out just gets you one close, less step closer to a yes. And like, you didn't have it before, you know, like you haven't been featured on that podcast before you're not in Forbes yet. Like and so be you asking to, or pitching to be in Forbes and you get a no, it's like nothing got taken away from you. Like you didn't already have it. And so you didn't lose anything, but you could gain like massive amounts of credibility. My first media feature was Forbes. And as a like little tiny mom of babies and toddlers, party planner, in like that barely even just got her own laptop a couple months ago um, because I was a teacher and I decided to stay at home after my kids were born and I had to give back my school laptop. That was the only computer that I had was the one that the school gave me. And uh, boom, less than a year later, my business was, and my story of how I created my party planning business uh, was being featured in Forbes. And so it's like, it's because I had the cojones to put myself out there and to be like, social is great, but there's got to be a better way than banging my head against this game, this game. And this was granted before even stories was a thing. Instagram stories 100% changed my business because it allowed my audience to build a relationship with me that we can talk about in another time, but <laughs> <laughs> the relatability aspect of that, but pitching also is 
once you nail your pitching strategy, you get to use that for all different avenues. You get to use that for speaking engagement, speaking on podcasts, being on stage on an event, in an online summit, speaking to a membership community, writing for someone's blogs, getting your product featured in a gift guide. Like the list goes on and on, including how you do your messaging and how you share your offers with your audience. You are constantly pitching yourself as a credible person for them to trust day in and day out with the content that you put out. Yes. So good. And I'm so glad that you touched upon just getting those no's. And yeah, that's way better than being ghosted because then, you know, somebody actually got it and you're like yeah. actually making like traction. Yeah, so a no's my a good thing. line was opened. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Something worked. Yes, exactly. And, and for me, like a no just means next opportunity. Okay. All right. I'm just going to move on and I'm going to keep yeah. going. Because mm -hmm. so many times I think we hear a no and then we're like, oh, I should just stop. Well, no, you're going to have to do this a lot before oh you start Hun to gain some leeway. Hundreds, hundreds, just buckle up people. But you know what? It does not have to be as scary as it sounds. Pitching yourself, writing a pitch, finding a media contact, all of that sounds very overwhelming, but we also make it just way more overwhelming than it actually has to be. Once you really write a solid pitch and you feel good about your pitch, you tweak that like so well. It never, ever, ever, ever do we recommend sending copy and pasted pitches because we all see through that within one second. But the majority of your pitch, the bulk of your pitch is going to be copy and pasted with some tweaks and personalization based on the outlet, the audience, and the person that you are pitching. But once you kind of get that, like, oh, I feel really good about this, like you get a baseline to jump from each time. And you're not starting from scratch over and over like you do a social media post. It's different. It's like a thing that you have that you can tweak and cater to different audiences without reinventing the wheel every time. Yes, so true. And it's so important. Please do not copy and paste because I can't tell you how many times I get pitches from prospective guests for the podcast and I'll get oh these God. these managers that'll send me this thing. And it's obviously copy and paste it because they'll like yes. take one episode and it'll be like a totally different font size and letters and everything <laughs> than the rest of it. And then like, then they screw yeah. something up towards the, I'm like, what? They don't use your name. Right. Uh, yeah. I had a podcast for years when I was in the party and celebration space and it was like laughable. Like yeah. I have a folder of my worst pitches ever because they're just absolute garbage. And it's insane. How easy would it be to select all and do the same font color and font size? Like right. you're so dumb. You're so dumb. Right. Like it just, it would blow my mind. And these were from PR agents. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Why, like, you should never, ever, ever have someone pitching you on your behalf. I am very, very set in that. Like, once there's a certain level of uh, celebrity or like awareness or whatever, that PR does come into play. Where we're at, that is not the case. We do not outsource our PR because we don't have people talking about our business on our behalf. And I am never going to pitch something like serving. I would never have somebody take that from me as I would never hire a social media manager to be on social on my behalf. It is the same thing. If you are in the business of wanting to create a personal business or brand, which literally everybody listening is, do not give away the things that make your personal brand relatable to the audience and the community you're trying to foster. If you are not the one behind social media, you are doing yourself a massive disservice as much as we all want to give social media up and give to somebody else. If you are not the one showing up on stories and talking to your people, you just, your business is buy, like have fun getting that back and pitching on like somebody outsourcing your pitching. Same thing. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah, definitely. Hard so truths with Allison Carter. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it because these are things that a lot of times we get into chasing shiny objects. We're like, oh, well, one day I'll outsource this and I'll have all the time. One day I'll outsource that and I'll have all the time. Well, there's certain things that, that you are at the secret sauce that People yep. are buying from people. People are buying from people they know, like, and trust. I mean, it's a fact. 
It's you're not going to buy from somebody that you know nothing about, especially when you're you're hiring them for very specific things like hiring a coach to help you navigate a business. That's a pretty big decision. You want to know that person that you're going to be getting into their world because it's a big investment. So I, I absolutely love that. So when pitching yourself, how do moms even go about figuring out who should I pitch myself to? Mm -hmm. What advice can you give us about that? Mm -hmm. So there's two different types of media that you want to be thinking of the written kind and the speaking kind. And so right now I'm an example of being featured on a media outlet for the speaking kind, because hello, this is my voice. <laughs> so if you are on a stage, if you're doing a summit, if you're doing all those things we talked about an Instagram live, um, going live with someone on Instagram, doing some sort of collaboration and that way also, all of those things are speaking or there's the written form. So do you want to write a blog post for someone? Do you want to contribute to a contributor platform today? Parents, great contributor platform that you can start writing for literally today. Um, there is motherly another like really great contributor platform for you to start posting articles to thrive global. There's a lot of contributor platforms that you can sign up for and start writing for and start getting featured on their websites. Um, and then you could do like blog post swaps with people. Like if you have a mom blog, blog that caters to like food and you are like a recipe writer, boom, baby, like, Hey, here's my favorite snacks. Like write a blog post because me being featured in media outlets in this capacity is really freaking key for SEO. And Google loves that the more you are on the internet, the more Google likes you, the more gold stars you get to be higher in the rankings. And so we want as many gold stars from Google as we can possibly have, because if somebody is searching for something, obviously we want to come up in that search. Google's now like YouTube videos, TikTok is a massive search engine now. Pinterest obviously is a search engine. And so there's all kinds of things that we want to be showing up with on those platforms that are essentially search engines for our content to get in front of people. And so you first need to figure out what is the best outlet for you and your content. If you are a very visual brand speaking, unless you're like on video, unless this goes up on YouTube or unless you're hosting a YouTube show or an in-person event, speaking is hard for a visual brand because it's really hard to explain with your voice and have the person like try and visualize. So a blog contributor blog or swap a blog swap or something like that would be really great for you to be thinking about. If you're a product chasing a gift guide, thinking of how to get featured in a gift guide or a product roundup that mom influencers do building a relationship with that mom influencer and going down that road. So what is the avenue for you is the first thing that you need to do. So we can pick one and do like an example, like, is that, do you think that will be like the easiest for people? Yeah, to definitely. Have, like do the yeah. whole trajectory. Yeah. Why not? Talk, th okay. talk us through it. So let's say that someone wants to be on a, on a podcast. Like we, someone listening is like, oh, I want to be her. I want to be interviewed on a podcast. I'm going to pitch Amy. Uh, so what do we do when we want to be featured on a podcast? So the first thing that we need to do is like find a podcast. Number one excuse I get from everybody that I work with. I just don't know that they really listen to podcasts or like, I know this person, person's podcast. And I'm like, yeah, you don't have to know them. Like I didn't know Amy before she emailed me. Like I would, that's how it goes. Like, this is not a thing. Like we don't know everybody's podcast. How could we possibly do that? So we use the gift that iTunes and Spotify gives us, but their search, their search capacity. Guess what? SEO searchability is in podcast platforms too. And so when you open Apple or you open your iTunes app, you're going to search maybe Amy's podcast is your ideal audience. And maybe she speaks to your ideal audience. So you're going to go to her podcast and you're going to kind of scope out what guests she has had and what topics she has had. And maybe she's an awesome person for you to pitch. And if her audience is like, Okay, she's going to be on my list, but then I also want more. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of her page, and there's a whole line of podcasts at the bottom that are like, you might also like. You're going to scroll through those to see an add to your list. 
anyone who works with me, we've got a list of at least 50 podcasts going on in the works because we are podcast tour people and we are fill up our calendar as, as quickly as possible people, because we want to blitz. The best thing that someone can say is, God, I feel like I see your name everywhere. And you're like, hot damn, it is working. <laughs> Woo! go me. That's my goal. And so we want to not just a little dabble, do ya? We want to be pitching consistently and getting on people's calendars because everybody's schedules are way different. Some podcasts are scheduling. And I mean, Amy emailed me like a long time ago, like forever ago, months. And so now it's like, okay, so people are months ahead. Sometimes you'll get on a podcast and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this was so good. I'm going to like feature you next week. Like you literally never know. And so it's like filling up your schedule. Great idea. So you want to make a list of all of the podcasts that your audience would be listening to and starting with the low hanging fruit. So we got low hanging fruit. We've got realistic, but kind of bigger goals. And then we've got big, huge dreamies. So we've got Amy and then we've like, let's say we have another show with say like a hundred thousand downloads or something like that, like of a mid tier show. And then we've got like the gold diggers, which is like, we're working our way up to Jenna, you know, like we're not in Jenna's circle right now. We're clawing our way up to get to there. So we're starting with the low hanging fruit. We're starting with the people that we can relate to. We could build relationships with. They like, they're open to talk to us. They are accepting guests. Um, and then we really just kind of start from there and we start engaging with them on social media. We start following them because the worst thing you can do in a pitch is to tell somebody that you love them so much and that you love their content and you don't even follow them on social media. No hard pass. Do not collect, go and pass or collect $200 mask out. Like you're out because you're liar, liar, pants on fire. So we're not doing that. If you are going to say like a connection with them, you need to follow them. So like a week or so before you are planning on sending your pitch, start following them, start like reacting to their story, start genuinely engaging with them. So then when you're writing your pitch, you can have a connection point of saying, oh my gosh, Amy, I loved that interview that you did with Alison Carter. I mean, she was so fun. I totally want to be friends with her. Like uh, she taught me so much about pitching and I went and pitched and I got my first pitch. Yay. I would love to be on your podcast. Like those are the things that you want or wow. I love that reel that you did about so-and-so it really resonated. Thanks for serving in that way. Like you have a genuine connection of, okay, this chick's kind of paying attention to what I'm doing. She's really genuinely like interested in my audience and all like also her pitch is solid. And so like, this is going to be a good fit. So parts of a pitch introduction. Who the heck are you? I'm blank founder of blank. And I help blank do blank Two connection piece. Just like we talked about genuine, be a human three. How are you relevant to your audience? I know that your audience feels a little stuck playing the Instagram game and banging their head against the wall when they're spending so much time creating their content. And then it goes and dies a slow death on Instagram. And they want actual people and eyeballs and like on their content that they're spending so much time creating and they feel stuck and they don't know how to get more eyeballs. I can help with that. Then four is your story ideas. What are three like kind of topics that you feel like would be really relevant to their audience that you can touch on that goes to your expertise? And then five, assertive closing. I got this in the bag. Cannot wait to talk to you. I'm so excited to serve your audience. Send me your calendar and let's get a time scheduled. You are showing up confident because there's no like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for considering. I really hope that I get to talk to you soon because then you're like, no, you just came across as this credible ex expert and that has this confidence and authority that's going to help my people. And then you end like little like meek. No, we don't play that game. Like we're ending confident the whole pitch and it's going to make them want to talk to you. Fast and furious style. Welcome to my style of teaching. <laughs> I absolutely love it though, because you described exactly what I look for mm -hmm. as the host of a podcast. You know, I, I get tons of these a day. Like I don't have the time to read every little detail keep it short, sweet, to the point. What are your talking points? What are you doing? X, Y, Z, who you are, what you do, done. Like yep. you need to show up confidently. So Allison just shared with you, that is the way you do it. 
build the relationship. That is key. Really get to know more about who you're pitching, how you can provide value to their audience. Because I am all about supporting the uh, other women and collaborating with them and bringing them on to expose them to a new audience because they're sharing value with my audience. So, hey, you know, it is such a mutual benefit and I just absolutely love it. I think podcast tours are amazing. I think that is one of the most often overlooked growth tactics and visibility tactics because literally, like you said, those are those like, Look at like audiences. Yes, yep. it takes a little bit of research yep. on the front end. Mm-hmm. But that's what's going to propel you to that level of success. Yep. So go back to this episode, bookmark it, re-listen to it as often as you need to and get into Allison's world because she knows what she is talking about. Like she literally explained and gave you the roadmap of how to pitch a podcast because yes, that's what I look for. And this is coming from someone that's, I mean, as of the time we're recording this, I think I'm like 130 some episodes in. Yes, mm-hmm. do what she's telling you to do and it will Boom, work. Baby. Mic drop. Boom, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Allison, this was amazing. How oh, can good. we get into your world? Allison Carter celebrates, find me on Instagram. That's where I hang the most. You'll see all my shenanigans. I show my life on social media because that is, how I do it. And that is how I find success in that. So following there, I have a monthly membership called the basic pitch club. That is all about visibility, all about content, uh, like creation and strategy and everything like that too. Like, what am I going to talk about in my pitch? What content do I want to put on social media that actually is going to get responses? All that fun stuff. It's an awesome group of creative entrepreneurs. And then I actually have a free pitching checklist also that goes way more in depth to that fast and furious little bomb that I dropped on everybody. And that's just basic dash pitch dash checklist. It's on my website too. And then Amy will put it in the show notes as well. So go download that. It's got all the parts that you need in your pitch way more like organized than uh, listening while you're doing carpool. And then also a lot of the do's and the don'ts of pitching, like do not fall into that pitfall where you are immediately ghosted, never to be seen again. We don't want to fall into that dark hole. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Absolutely amazing. And thank you again, Allison, for taking time out of your busy day to share your value and knowledge with our listeners. We appreciate you. Any time. I'm happy to share. My DMs are open, uh, but go be brave. Go be bold. Send your first pitch. You've got nothing to lose. Exactly. All right. Until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 